All right, come on up if you are a kid. So yeah, you three, I know we might have some upstairs if you want to, you don't have to come on up. You guys can sit right here. Oh, you're gonna sit in Fred, sorry. Yeah, the kids at our Yeah, no, no, sit right here. All right, it's our first week, so we're not so professional at this. You guys are gonna face me. I know, it's crazy, huh? I know, look at that, there you go. We're just gonna like ignore them for a little bit. Anybody else wanna come on up? You're welcome to, oh, oh, of course. I said anyone, yes, then, here they are. Okay, so, well, so uh, during the summer, we're gonna have what we call kids message. So this is it, and we have a big kid right here. And you know what, I'm actually really, really glad Judy's here. I did not tell her to come up. No one tells Judy what to do, but I didn't tell her to come up, but I'm really, really glad she did because it's perfect for what we're talking about today. Did you guys kind of feel a theme going on of hope in the songs we sang? I saw you guys jamming out to those. That was a good song. It's going to be stuck in my head. You keep hope alive. You keep hope alive. I know what I'm going to be singing over and over all week. You felt motivation. Excellent, I know. So today we're going to be listening to Pastor Fred, and he is going to be talking about um, some verses out of Romans. And some of the words that stuck with me when I was reading what he's going to be talking about was this word patience. <laughs> um, yep. It has in here, we need to receive one another just as Christ received you. Amen. He loves every single one of us, and we need to do the same. And then it says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. That's, those are the parts I just wanted to talk about today, and mostly this receiving one another. Because, you know, we are all different. You guys ever have uh, someone that you look at and you think they're better at something than you? What, what do you have? Soccer. Soccer, yeah. I, that wouldn't be me. I can't even run the field. So I, there'd be a lot of people better at that than me. What's yours? Video games. Video games. Well, there's another one that I would really stink at. So, yep, I agree. Swimming. Swimming. They're, those are all really good things. <coughs> Patience. <laughs> Patience. That's a hard one. I think last week he said don't pray for it because it'll put you in situations where you need to practice it. So we all have things. But now, can you think about something that you're better at than someone else? Can you think of something? Basketball. Basketball, all right. What are you good at that you might be better than someone else? Humble kids, that's a good quality. Video games, oh, so you know people are better than you, but you're better than other people. I like it, very good. Judy, do you have anything that you're better at than maybe someone else that you think? Not that I can say in public. Not that you can say in public. All right, well, thank you. This is a kid's message, so I appreciate that self-control. Very nice. All right, so, you know what, guys? We have a lot of things that we're all different at, we're all good at. I would like the people, if you can, to stand up or just raise your hand if you helped yesterday at the water event. And I want you guys to look at them because you weren't able to come. Do you see? Look at all the different people that helped. Do you guys see that? Okay. No, they weren't able to come yesterday. But guys, you know what? We did it, and we did it together. We have a mission here at this church to work together. And I want you, Judy, can you hold it? You're going to need two hands for this, okay? Judy, I know. So Judy, can you hold uh, on to this? I don't, I don't want to touch it. So you hold right here on this metal with just that hand, okay? Now, hold hands with him. And you hold hands with your brother, and you hold hands with him. Okay? You see that? Any Anything happening to that? Nothing's happening. Okay, so now I'm going to use my knees for the microphone. And I'm going to hold hands with you. Anything happening yet? Okay, how about now? Let's see. Okay, let's try this. <laughs> <laughs> Patience. 
patience. <laughs> Judy, did you pay, pray for patience this morning? No, it is not. I don't know what's going on. It will work, I suppose, when it decides to. What happens, and I'm just going, you know, a teachable moment here. So, I know it's, I don't know what's wrong. It worked, like, on the way in the car on the way here. So, uh, but it does. It's worked for, like, ten years. But, of course, today it is. What will happen is, this is lights up. And it's very cool. And then, you've seen it before. Awesome. So, you know I'm not, I'm not lying to you. Okay? When we're broken like this, it won't light up. But when I hold hands with him, it lights up. I could put every single person in this church this big, and it, it would work. I don't know why it's not. We'll have a little conversation later about that. But you know what? It's amazing. It's amazing because when we stick together, we are together in Christ. And anything is possible. When we break and when we think someone, some, when someone's down and we don't help lift them back up again, we're not going to be as successful as we could be in reaching people for Christ. We need to stick together. And it takes every single person's talent because God made us all different. We all need to stick together. And that's when we have the most amazing hope in Jesus Christ because he has great things for us planned. You're better at something than you. You're better at something than you. And everyone out here has their own gifts and talents that they're good at. We need all of us to stick together to light the world on fire for Jesus. All right, let's pray about that real quick. Dear God, thank you so much for these kids and for these kids at heart and for all the adults in the room. Lord, we love you. Help us to stick together even when we have differences. Help us to learn that you made each one of us special. And when one of us is down or not feeling well or going through a hard time, help us to lift that person up because we are better together for you. We love you, Jesus, and we have hope in your name that we are going to do great things for you in this place. All those you pray in your name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Stand up first. Yeah, this is how you do it. Stand up. 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 Stand up.
And he was talking to them because we know that the Jews were strong in their faith. They believed wholeheartedly in the Messiah. They believed wholeheartedly in the practices that they had grown up with. Now, in Judaism, it defines who you are. Okay? Back in the day. Today, not so much. When you talk about people that are Jewish today, it could be Jewish by heritage, it could be Jewish because they were born in Israel, or it could be Jewish because they actually adhere to and practice the Jewish faith. But then, being Jewish, it was your faith. It is what defined you as a human being. So they were strong in their faith. And now you have these, these new people coming in. These people that didn't believe the same way, didn't act the same way, didn't practice the same traditions that the Jewish people did. And so Paul had to encourage them in such a way that would bring about unity in the church and harmony. That there was no Jew, there was no Gentile. There was only Christians. And it is the responsibility of the strong in faith to help those who are weaker in faith to fully understand and know what it means to be a Christ follower. In many ways, I think there's two types of people in the world we could narrow it down to if you really wanted to. There's those who believe in Jesus and those who don't. Now that seems rather simple, doesn't it? But when you think about it, as Christ followers, that is kind of how we see the world. There's people who believe in Jesus, like us, and there's people who don't. Our role in advancing God's kingdom is to share the gospel with those people who do not know Jesus yet. Now, there's people who have heard of Jesus and have chosen not to believe in him. And there's people still in the world who have not heard the gospel. And as Christ followers, it's our duty to extend God's kingdom to them. Now, within the, the realm of those who say, you know, they believe in Jesus, they've accepted Jesus, you have a multitude of people. <laughs> you have people who are Christian in name only, you might say. They say they believe in God, but their life really doesn't reflect it. They say they follow Jesus, but you wouldn't know it by the way they talk, or the way they act, or the way they behave. And then you have those who believe in Jesus, who accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, who follow Him, as difficult as it is, day to day, trying to be the type of follower of Jesus that brings glory to God. So that kind of sets the stage for where we are as we enter into Romans chapter 15, starting in verse 1. Paul has said this whole chapter prior to this about what you eat and what you drink and how you live and all of these types of things. And then he says, so we who are strong in faith should help Another way of saying that is to bear with struggles and not please only ourselves. Let each of us please our neighbors for their good to help them be stronger in faith. Even Christ did not live to please himself. It was as the scripture said, when people insult you, it hurts me. He's referencing Psalm. 69.9, where it says, the insults of those who insulted you have fallen on me. That's about Jesus. Another psalm professing about Christ. So it says, even Christ did not live to please himself. It was the scripture said, when people insult you, it hurts me. 
So how, as Christ followers, are we to live in harmony together? How are we to share our joy, our happiness, and ultimately, how do we have hope as each day goes by? And it just seems like it gets tougher and tougher and tougher as we watch the world around us, oftentimes seeming like it's spinning out of control. Well, Romans 15, 4 through 6 continues that idea. It's about putting others first. Jesus <coughs> expects us to be like him. To put others first. Those first three verses tell us that we who are stronger in faith are to help those who are weaker. And how do we do that? It goes on to say, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. What he's referring to is the Hebrew scripture. He's pointing to the Old Testament to say, what was written in the past was written for us. This goes back to what we've talked about before when we say that if you understand the New Testament and you understand who Jesus is, you can then go back to the Old Testament and you can see Jesus' fingerprints all over it. You can see God's plan of redemption. If we don't understand Christ's story, and if we don't understand who Christ is and why he came, if we, go, if we just start in the Hebrew Scripture, if we spend all our time in the Hebrew Scripture, it just sounds like a lot of rules and regulations and wars and battles and killing. And guys like that? But it doesn't help us to understand that the Old Testament, yes, it's the history of God's relationship with the Jewish people, but it is also a part of us. It points to Jesus. Constantly. So it says, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. The scriptures give us patience. Or if you don't like that word patience, you can substitute the word endurance. Pray for endurance instead of patience. Maybe that would get a different result. I don't know. Try it. So it says scriptures give us patience and encouragement so that we can have hope. May the patience and encouragement that come from God allow you to live in harmony with each other the way Christ Jesus wants. Then you will all be joined together and you will give glory to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verses 5 and 6 are a unity prayer. It is a prayer that our church, that any church, could adopt and pray every single Sunday. Let me read it to you again. Verses 5 and 6. May the patience and encouragement that come from God allow you to live in harmony with each other the way Christ Jesus wants. Then you will all be joined together and you will give glory to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Live in harmony with one another. Let us not focus on people's faults, idiosyncrasies, way of dress, way of talk, attitudes towards worship, attitudes towards God and Jesus. But let us instead live in harmony. Those of us that are stronger in faith, building up those who are weaker in faith. Helping them to understand the hope that they have in Christ Jesus. Living in harmony. What kind of message does that send to the world when they see people of all different backgrounds, of all different social, economic Makeups, rich, poor, highly educated, lowly educated, 
all different colors, living together in harmony, accepting one another for who they are and where they are. That is Christ's church. That is what is to be expected of us, to live in harmony, to show unity, to not be divisive and quarreling about things that, quite frankly, in the end, have nothing to do with salvation. We would be happy as we welcome one another in Christ's name. Romans 15, 7 through 11 continues, Accept each other just as Christ accepted you. How is it that, that we cannot do that? Knowing that Christ has accepted us with all of our problems and baggage and sins. We all know ourselves. And yet we can realize that Christ accepted us. And if he can accept us, for who we are, knowing who we are, we would do well to accept others with the same amount of grace. It continues. I tell you that Christ became a servant of the Jews to show that God's promises to the Jewish ancestors are true. And he also did this so that the Gentiles could give glory to God for the mercy he gives to them. For it is written in the scriptures, so I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing praises to your name. That comes from Psalm 18. The scripture also says, be happy. We don't have to be a bunch of sour puss Christians. <laughs> we have the hope of the world. We have the joy of Christ in us. We should not be the ones looking all sour and dour. We should be dancing with the joy of Christ in our hearts every single day, knowing what he has done for us. Amen. 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 I will sing praises to your name. The scripture says, be happy, you Gentiles, together with his people. Again, the scriptures say, all you Gentiles, praise the Lord. All you people, sing praises to him. When we accept one another, God is glorified. When people look in on our little church here and see how we are welcoming and accepting of people, God is glorified. His church is glorified. We have to be the ones who set the example. Not waiting for someone else to do it. Not waiting for someone to extend the hand of greeting, of welcoming. But we must welcome one another. For you see, God's plan always included the Gentiles. It wasn't designed for just the Jewish people. God's redemptive plan, starting in Genesis, always included those outside the Jewish faith. The scriptures that Paul quotes here from Psalms say that. They were always to be included. Fortunately, the Jewish folks dropped the ball. And as also often the case, we take the joy and the wonder of what we have and we want to keep it for ourselves. But God doesn't do this. God did this. Amen. Amen. His arms opened wide to welcome and receive all those who have fallen short of the glory of God, which is all of us. Which brings us to verse 12. Verse 12 says, and again in Isaiah, Paul points to the Old Testament constantly here. Referring to the law and to the prophets and the writings. And in Isaiah, he refers to the fact that a new king will come from the family of Jesse. He will come to rule over the Gentiles, and they will have hope because of him. 
They will have hope because of him. Jesus is our living hope. We are fortunate to have a God that loves us so much. To come and dwell amongst us. Jesus Christ, God with us. God incarnate. Everybody wants to know who God is and what does he look like. We look no further than Jesus Christ. He gives us the example of the kind of God that we have. Numerous times Jesus says, I only do the will of the Father. As you see me, you see the Father. I am only working the work of the Father. Hope. Having hope. Hope for the nations. Hope that goes beyond the Jewish faith to the Gentiles. Hope that extends into the 21st century, allowing us to bring hope into the world that desperately needs it. Hope for the nations. How many people do we know that are far from God? who don't know the joy and the peace that we have because of our saving knowledge of Christ. That is why this church exists here in this community, to bring hope. We saw that yesterday. We saw that with the way people were so willing to engage with us and the way we were willing to engage with them. We live in a community that is looking for hope, especially after this last year. I heard it over and over again yesterday in talking to people, how grateful they were that we were doing what we were doing, that we were open. And without saying it, you could say that we were extending hope, hope in this world. And it brings us to the final verse, chapter, or verse 13. Paul says, I pray that the God who gives hope will fill you with much joy and peace while you trust through your faith in him. Then your hope will overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. We firmly believe, as Pastor Kelly said on Pentecost, <laughs> The Holy Spirit is in this place. I have had people remark on that time and time again. When Shelley and I first came into this building a year ago, there was just this overwhelming sense of peace. And all I've seen since then is joy. Joy in your faces. Joy in being able to be here and worship and gather. Joy in knowing that Christ is on the move in this community. Who knows what the next year holds for us? But I believe that God is going to do a mighty work. Because God is building his church. It's not my church. It's not your church. It's God's church. And as long as we have hope, we will have joy and peace. And as long as we have hope, we can continue to live in harmony with one another. And as long as we have hope, we can be those happy Christians. And as long as we continue to have trust in him, our hope cannot help but overflow. His doors thrown open wide, with hope going out into the streets, as it should be with God's church. Because our joy and peace come through believing in Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hope that you give us through our trust and our faith in you. 
we can have joy and we can have peace. And Lord, it is before you that we lay these prayer requests of our people who struggle days and months with illness and death. And yet, somehow, they are still able to find hope and joy and peace. And so, Father, we lift up to you Sarah Clouser and her family as they continue to mourn the loss of their son, her son, Scott. And, Father, we continue to pray for Judy Perryman as well as she continues and fights through the pain of her cancer. We pray for little Michael and Lexi and their family loss of physical things. But we praise you that all of them are safe. We pray for Diana Butnicki and her diagnosis of stage 4 breast cancer. We pray for her and her family as she faces this illness. And we pray hope for her. And God, we praise you for rich days and the results of his radiation treatments and the the shrinking of the cancer, and being able to ring the bell that the radiation is over. We praise you, God, that even in the midst of turmoil and pain and struggle, we can have hope. Hope for you to bring us joy and peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.